Hey guys, welcome back. I know it's been a little while since I made a video, uh, so I'm sorry for that. I uh, have been super busy with rotations, and then I got sick, so that kept me down for a while, but I wanted to make a quick video now, and uh, this is going to be another high-yield concept. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the adenoma to carcinoma sequence uh, in terms of the pathogenesis of colorectal cancer. So this is a pretty uh, high yield topic on USMLE Step One as well as Comex Level One. There's a lot of a lot of different nuances that they want you to know about it that are really easy to to be tripped up. They've they've certainly confused me a couple times. So let's just get right into it. This picture is directly from First Aid 2017. Uh, I know there's a lot of different pictures that include some things that aren't on this picture, but I thought this was the simplest one and it's directly from the book so and and pretty much everything that you need to know for the most part is on this slide i'm going to add a couple things here and there uh that you might see but but this is a pretty simple breakdown of the topic so i i think it's good to start this way so really what we're dealing with here is the molecular and genetic changes that cause someone to have a normal colon and that slowly uh devolves, if you will, to become cancer, to become a carcinoma. So it's a normal colon, and then it starts to become an adenoma, and then it becomes full-blown full blown cancer. And there are a, a few certain things that happen, and the reason that this is so important and that test makers love to go after this is because it's in a certain order. Uh, I know in the, in the first aid book it says AK53 is the order, kind of looking at the genes here, so A, K, 53 is is what they kind of like to go with for me i also remember that it was kind of alphabetical so a comes before k comes before p uh, so either way you want to think about it whatever helps you to remember this super important so we're going to start over here on the left and obviously you, you start with a normal colon and there are people who uh have hereditary hereditary abnormalities mutations in certain genes that uh cause an increased propensity to develop cancer. Two that aren't listed on this slide here are MLH1 and MSH2. I believe those are listed somewhere in the beginning of first aid. Uh, so again, MLH1 and MSH2 uh, can cause Lynch syndrome, which is formerly known as hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer. Very important to note non-polyposis there. If you see in a vignette that a, a patient has a lot of polyps on their colon, you can already uh, rule out Lynch syndrome and those two genes, so you don't have to worry about those. But those are two genes that can cause uh, a, a type of colorectal cancer. So like I said, we start with a normal colon here, and the first thing that's going to happen in this sequence is the loss of the APC gene. Uh, this is the adenomatous polyposis coli gene, so that kind of tells you it's on the path of becoming an adenoma, there's going to be development of polyps, and it has to do with the colon. So you kind of just get that from the name. And the really important thing to note here is that it's a loss of this gene. That means that it's a tumor suppressor gene. So normally, this gene is present and active, and it's suppressing a tumor. And the minute that it's inactivated and then it's lost, uh, that's, that's when you start the, the initiation of this pathway. And I'll go through that kind of thing with each of these genes here, because that's where I've noticed a lot of the questions come from. So one of the first things that you'll start to notice is that there's going to be decreased intercellular adhesion and increased proliferation. Um, just kind of a random tidbit that I've read in a lot of different places. One of the kind of beginning signs of cancer starting is a decreased adhesion to other cells. The cancer cells kind of break away from other cells and start to do their own thing. So you won't ever see that on the slide or anything, like you won't have to interpret that, but it's just kind of a signal. And then obviously the increased proliferation that's always associated with cancer. So our first step there is the loss of the APC gene. So what that means is that the colon is at risk and specifically it's at an increased risk for polyp formation. So that brings us to our, neck in, our second step and that's going to be a KRAS mutation. So this is another gene uh, and that's going to lead to unregulated intracellular signaling. So the cancer cells were already proliferating a ton now there's going to be unregulated signaling to upregulate production of proteins, upregulate cytoskeletal elements, that kind of thing. Really the stuff that the cells, the cancer cells need to survive. And this KRAS mutation 
is going to lead to formation of polyps. And we're slowly going to start to get our adenoma. So two steps in, we're already kind of seeing that benign tumor-like mass starting to grow. Uh, and then the third step is really what's going to cause the full-blown cancer. There's a, a couple different steps and genes involved here, but the main two that they want you to know that are in first aid are P53, obviously our, our main guardian angel gene everybody knows about, and also DCC. And DCC should really be one that's easy to remember because it literally stands for deleted in colorectal carcinoma, DCC. So that tells you exactly what's going on and, and what happens when that's gone. So that is going to cause an increased tumor genesis. So that is what's going to cause the adenoma, this benign mass, to become a full-blown carcinoma, a full-blown cancer uh, in the colon. <clears throat> now, a couple other things to note with uh, this sequence that aren't here is that you can also have increased COX expression. I believe it's COX-2. Overexpression of COX-2 um, also plays a role in this kind of progression from adenoma to carcinoma. So that's not on the slide, but I have seen it in questions. So uh, loss of P53, loss of DCC, and overexpression of COX-2. Very important to know that. Uh, I want to circle back real quick and go through these genes a bit again, because this is one of the things that used to trip me up and that trips a lot of people up. Uh, so the first thing that you want to know is the location of these genes. Uh, I have seen that on several questions. It's not listed here on this image, but it is important to know, so I'm going to say it. So the APC gene is on chromosome 5. Whatever you need to remember that, APC is on chromosome 5. The KRAS gene is on chromosome 12. The P53 gene, it's so important, but a lot of us don't even know where it is. It's actually on chromosome 17. And the DCC gene is on chromosome 18. So one more time, chromosome 5 chromosome 12, chromosome 17, and chromosome 18. Definitely know those because I have seen questions that will give you the gene straight up and then they'll ask, where is this gene located? And it's a really silly thing to get wrong because it's just a quick thing to memorize. So definitely memorize that, get those easy points. The next thing to know is, is kind of the classification of these genes in terms of cancer. Um, everyone knows uh, that studies medicine that the two kind of main types of cancer genes are oncogenes or proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes. So just in case it wasn't clear from this image, we need to classify all of these genes. Every, whenever you see loss of a gene leading to cancer, that's going to be a tumor suppressor. That gene normally, when active, like I said, is going to suppress a tumor. And then when it's gone, boom, cancer. So loss of the APC gene here, that makes the APC gene a tumor suppressor gene. Over here, KRAS mutation, this is uh, an overactivation. So this is going to be classified as an oncogene, or I guess technically before it causes anything, it's a proto-oncogene. So KRAS is a, an oncogene. And then finally here, these two are listed, which is nice. P53 and DCC, remember these are deleted in colorectal carcinoma. So if you have a loss of these, a loss of these that means you have tumor suppressor genes. So one more time, APC is on chromosome 5 and it is a tumor suppressor gene. KRAS is on chromosome 12 and it is an oncogene. P53 is on chromosome 17 and it is a tumor suppressor gene. And DCC is on chromosome 18 and it is also a tumor suppressor gene. Very important to know the sequence and order, AK53, alphabetic, whatever helps you to remember it, where the mutations are, what is happening um, at each step. So I'll review that again. This APC mutation puts the colon at risk it, uh, for increased polyp formation. The KRAS mutation is what leads to the formation of polyps and the adenoma. And then the P53 and DCC mutation allows the progression of this adenoma into a deadly carcinoma. So you definitely want to know those different elements as well. Like I said, uh, overexpression of COX-2, some people believe can also cause this tumorigenesis here. Uh, and NSAIDs, as it says in first aid, may be chemopreventive. So they may somehow prevent this, um, this progression, of course, by inhibiting COX-2. Uh, I don't know if you'll ever really see questions on that. I don't think I ever did, but it's still in the book, so it is important to know.
Uh, so that's going to be all for this video, a little faster than, than the other ones. Please be sure that you know all the little nuances, know the differences between oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, because those are easy things that you can be tripped up with when you're tired on test day, and, and it's a loss of easy points. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, concerns, any suggestions for other videos, uh, please comment below. Like always, please subscribe to my channel and anything I can do to help and make better videos, please, please let me know. So that's all for now and take care.